Welcome everybody at Ask the Professor, the last part of this rail move. I really enjoy that you send all these kinds of questions and this time we like to discuss uh, rail data and monitoring of the rail and also rail monitoring and the train in, uh, inclusive. I had a question of that and the question was can we not combine all this kind of information uh, about the, the services we could have from sensors on track, on train and how can we combine this to get information? But therefore, we need sensors on board and in, in the track. You get this data and you have to get this data inside a data center like this. And therefore, to get this, you have to, uh, to combine. But you have to imagine that when you combine all these kinds of data, like big data and analysis of that, you have to make information and it can be terabytes per day. So you can imagine you need this kind of uh, centers to collect all these data. So let's have a look. Another question I like to explain is that uh, there was a question about uh, what about uh, uh, glass fiber and can we not put these sensors into the rail? And I, th I think this is really a good question. Of course it is possible to put all kinds of sensors in the rail and here we are standing at the university campus and we have also tram rails over here. So it is possible that you put here on the rail itself, you can put uh, all kinds of sensors, training gauges to do some bending and also glass fiber to see the bending at all. Do we have that in Holland? Yes we have and we also use that. Uh, we have 40 uh, stations in ho Holland for the heavy rail uh, structure and we measure the load and also the dynamics of the wheels and the uh, wheel uh, the defects and we know exactly how to maintain it on time within 48 hours. We call that Covadas and also Gotcha systems and that you can see what they, uh, what they measure and we have also a database and therefore we do predictive maintenance for wheels and the load of the rail. Here in front of me you can see the CTO in scale and uh, the CTO means that it is a measurement train of the TU Delft. And why do we use this? Because we can make all kinds of theories and models, but what is a model when you ha have the problems outside in the track? So you have to translate these uh, new ideas, new theories into the real world. And that's always the case. New th techniques are really nice, but it must be proven technology. So it looks like chicken egg, what is first and how to do this. So the real world likes to have a tested model and new systems must be tested. And why not do it in this uh, measurement train? With students, but also with companies, we can use this for education and for research itself. And the students like to do this. And I like also in the future to give lectures in this train for the students get all this information, what they feel, so what they feel when they go over a bad part of the track or asset or switch, so you can explain what you really feel and how it is. You get real data, you can use that for validation into the modeling. And that's what we like to do here at Railway Engineering. The next question I like to uh, discuss with you, and I also uh, what talked about monitoring of railway, is that uh, uh, st structural health monitoring is a system. So first you need uh, a sensor, then you have the data. You have to make data into information, and this information that's about how to do preventive maintenance or whatever. So talking about the uh, the systems outside, what we already discussed. Uh, in another question, in this question I like to zoom in how to do structural health monitoring and I get a question on that one and uh, also the discussion about um, how far is it at the moment. And I think the technical part is really far already, also outside the railway business, but the question is how to bring this and implement this in the railway business itself. And I think that's the, 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 the challenge for the future. We can do that, we already do. I saw here also our uh, measurement coach on the, on the on a scale and our measurement codes in this train loop 
is running outside, we collect this data, we transfer this data and put that also in modelings and the models we have here so we can back into the design and how to build up a new and better performing system of railways. Another question about this is, um, do we need all these specific questions and, uh, about these, uh, these, these sensors? The sensors we put, for example, on the measurement codes, can we, what can we do with that? They are very precise, but do we need that? And that's another question I got. Uh, everything is monitoring, uh, but do we need all these precise uh, sensors? The question is no, we don't need that, but is it, it is wise to validate that. So there is a project here in Holland with another university, a technical university in, in Twente, and they are doing a project, real at the moment, so they like to combine mobile phones with all kinds of sensors you have in your smartphone, so why not use that? And we like to put them in the train, just see what happens, like a passenger also can collect this data from his mobile phone, and see what is the, uh, the, the, the relationship between the real big sensors to see with the accuracy and maybe this mobile phone could be a trigger and when you have multiple mobile phones there is also information and that could you also mention as big data. Thank you all for the questions you sent to me. I really uh, like to give answers and also enjoy all the answers and, and the questions on the, uh, on, online on the forum. Of the MOOC rail. I really uh, thank you for enjoy, uh, being be, uh, with us. There's also a follow up, so please, we are willing to, to go in, in, dip, in depth with other uh, things of, about railway business. Please uh, enroll and, uh, and go for it. And then we see each other back in the next uh, phase of this uh, full program. So thank you very much and see you later. Thank you. <laughs>